today I am going to explain the experiment 3 of physics to Charles law. So you already studied the concept of Charles law in chapter number 19, am I right? So what is the objective of today's experiment? You can just read what is your objective. We are going to investigate the Charles law and then we are going to find the number of moles of gas or moles of air present inside the container. Which container? You can just have a look here. We have a container here and inside the container nothing. It is an empty container and inside there are some gas molecules. So we are going to find how many moles of gas molecule or how many moles of air molecules present inside this container. This is our objective. So through Charles law. Clear my dear? So we are going to use this container or canister. The name of this as container or canister. You can use any one of them. So that is our objective. So for getting this number of moles, I am going to use this equation. Ideal gas equation. PV which is equal to NRT. My dear, already we studied. In this equation, according to this Charles law, your pressure is room pressure. That means atmospheric pressure. Your pressure is constant. You are going to change the temperature. Whenever you change the temperature, your volume will change. So what I am going to do? I am going to rewrite this equation like this. You can see here, P is a constant. V I am going to write as delta V which is equal to N or delta T. Why I just put delta V, delta T? Because both are variable. Your pressure is constant. By using this equation, we are going to find the number of moles. So rearrange this equation. Therefore, N which is equal to P over R multiplied by delta V over delta T. And this delta V over delta T, you are going to get from the graph. Clear? So this is our data analysis equation. This equation will be given in your exam paper, but you can see the pressure value is a constant. Atmospheric pressure is 1.01 multiplied by 10 to the power of 5 Pascal. R value is the gas constant 8.314 and here this delta V or delta T you are going to get from the graph. Okay? So we are going to use this equation for our data analysis. Now, if you just see the schematic diagram, that means what are the apparatus today we are going to use? We are going to use one water bath and we are going to use one temperature controller fixed with some thermometer. So if you just see here, we are going to use this is our water bath and we have a temperature controller. Here we fixed one thermometer to measure the temperature of the water. And if you just see the temperature controller, here you can see here, there are information about giving some different temperature. And this is your turn on off button switch. When you turn on, what will happen? These two lights will on. And what is the difference between these two lights? This light indicates the apparatus is working. And this light is used to check the water temperature. Suppose if you give 30 degree, the water will get heat. When you turn on, what will happen? Both light will turn on. Once the water reaches this 30 degree, the second light will be turned off. That means this is an indicator. This, this light indicates the water temperature. Once the water reaches the temperature, this bulb, this light will off. So once the light will off, again you have to measure what is the temperature. Clear? So this is your water bath. This is your water bath. This is your temperature controller or water circulator. And here we fixed one thermometer. My dear, each line in the thermometer is 0.5. If you just see each line in the thermometer is 0 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, likewise here 20, 20.5, 20 21, 22, 21.5, 22, 22.5, like that it will be coming. So each line in the thermometer is 0 0.5. And apart from that, we are going to use one calibrated measuring cylinder. You can see inside the cylinder you have a piston and if you just see the piston value, the piston value, this edge, is fixed to zero. So before you start the experiment, you have to make your piston to zero. So here the readings are given. Each line here is one millimeter. Clear? Each line is one millimeter. And here you connected this cylinder with this canister, with this container. So you have to attach this canister or container along with this measuring cylinder and here what will happen you are going to place this container canister inside after the water reaches 30 degree so you are going to give different temperature you are going to give 30 35 40 45 so every temperature after the water reaches the temperature you have to dip this canister inside 
when you dip this canister inside what will happen whatever the temperature the water have the same temperature is given to this canister inside the canister you have a gas molecule the gas will expand when you subject to some temperature what will happen the gas will be passed through this tube when the tube entered this measuring calibrated cylinder it will push the cylinder the piston upward that means for every temperature there will be change in um, position of the cylinder you can see here for every temperature the piston will be moving up so you can find the l value from the uh, cylinder okay so these are all the apparatus today we are going to use let's we see the table this is your table you are going to fill something i'm not going to explain for all the reading i'm going to explain for only one reading you have to repeat the same procedure for the rest of the temperature so if you see the table in the top of the table we give the information about tb what is tb temperature of the bath what is temperature of the bath this is our bath water bath so before you give some temperature you have to measure what is the temperature of the water so now i will tell you what is the value just a minute exactly the temperature of the water is 21 degree exactly the temperature of the water is 21 each small line is 0.5 so what i am going to do i am going to write 21 here clear and then initial position of the piston i already told you you have to keep before you start you have to keep your piston to zero that's what they mentioned here l not is zero millimeter each line in this calibrated cylinder is 0.1 sorry one millimeter not 0.1 one millimeter and what is the radius of the piston you can see here inside there is a piston and this piston has the radius of 16.25 millimeter so all these informations are given so you have to start with the temperature of the bath we already measured now you have to give 35 degrees celsius so i am going to give this 35 degrees celsius here i am going to give 35 here you can just have a look here 30 middle is 35 so i said 35 and i am going to turn on this if you turn on you can see the light two lights are on the first line indicates the condition of the apparatus the second line will indicate the temperature of the bath once you reach once the water reach this 35 this light will off clear so let's we just wait for the water to reach the temperature for that so you can just have a look here my dear we said 35 initially both light you can see now it's on maybe after some time this will be off that means once this light will be off you consider this water will reach this 35 degree celsius just a minute you can just have a look the water will be immediately turn off this sorry not water uh, see this see this light now it's turn off that means the water reached the temperature so now what you have to do see the table we said 35 in that dialer and the water reached this temperature because this light is turned off which indicates the water reached the temperature what you have to do you have to measure the temperature of the water again why because this controller we cannot be able to predict whether it will be giving exactly 35 sometimes it may be less than 35 sometimes it may be greater than 35 sometimes it may be exactly 35 it's depend upon the efficiency of the temperature controller okay so now you can see again i'm going to measure the temperature of the water because we said 35 let's we see what is the value Just show me 31 2, 31 2. Thirty-three. You can just have a look here. Exactly thirty-three. Clear, my dear. I am going to try because thirty-three. We said thirty-five, but thirty-five. But we got thirty-three. Clear. So now, once you find this T W, we have to find the change in temperature. What is the formula? T W minus T B. So what is our T W, my dear? Our T W is thirty-three. Our TB is 21, so you have to take your calculator. 33 minus 21 gives you 12. So I am going to write this 12 here. So we finish our change in temperature. Now we have to come for L. So now I told you, my dear, the water reached this temperature. Now what I am going to do? You can just see this. I am going to take this. I am going to dip inside. I am going to dip this inside when i just dip this inside you can just have a look of this cylinder so when i just put this inside this temperature is given to this canister inside the canister you have the gas and when this temperature is given that temperature is given to the gas 
the gas will be traveled through this pipe when it enter the piston it will push this piston in the upward direction just have a look here see here you can just see here my piston is rising small level because the temperature is small level am i right so what is the value my dear let's i just tell you the value 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 39 40 so my piston rise to 5 mm initially my piston is zero now it's pushed to 5 mm so it is moving in the upward direction so it's because of the temperature so i am going to write this value in our table so my l value is exactly 5 so what i am going to do i am going to again take this here we have a beaker i am going to put it inside so now i am going to write the value here my l value is 5 mm clear now once you got the answer for l you have the formula for delta l l minus l not but you can see the unit here we measured the l in terms of millimeter 5 minus 0 again it will be give 5 but you have to give the answer in terms of meter so 5 minus 0 millimeter gives you 5 millimeter if you convert this millimeter to meter 5 multiply by 10 to the power of minus 3 meter clear so once you got this delta l you can easily find the delta v by using this formula what is that formula pi r square delta l pi value 3.14 r value is already given here and delta l here when you just work out better i can just show you the calculation pi value shift pi value pi value multiply by r square what is the r square my dear this is very very important your r value is given in terms of millimeter again you have to convert this in terms of meter if you convert what you will get 16.25 multiply by 10 to the power of minus 3 meter so i am going to use this value 16.25 multiply by 10 to the power of minus 3 the whole square multiply by delta l what is our delta l 5 multiply by 10 to the power of minus 3 5 multiply by 10 to the power of minus 3 so what should be your answer i got 4.147 so i am going to take only two digit so i am going to write 4.15 multiply by 4.15 multiply by 10 to the power of minus 6 so likewise what you have to do you have to repeat the experiment for different so now what you have to do you have to set 40 you can see here here now it's 35 move to 40 when you move to 40 this light will start glowing once the water reach 40 degree this light will off again you have to measure what is the temperature of the water by using this thermometer once you measure again you have to take this canister you have to dip it inside and you have to see what is the piston position so likewise you have to repeat this experiment for different temperature and you have to fill the table and once you fill this table you have to draw the graph you can just see for what you are going to draw the graph you are going to draw the graph for delta v versus delta t that means this is your y axis this is your x axis so i am going to draw the graph here you have to take your y axis here delta v and its unit is meter cube and my delta t is kelvin and by using this value you can see the table all these will be your y axis and all these delta t will be in your x axis and you have to use this value for fixing the point in the graph paper and connect the points with a straight line by using your ruler and choose any two points on the line and this is your x1 value this is your x2 value this is your y1 value this is your y2 value so what is the slope my slope is exactly equal to delta y over delta x my delta y axis we took delta v my x axis we took delta t so the slope answer is exactly equal to delta v over delta t the unit for delta v is meter cube and my delta t is kelvin so the slope unit is meter cube over kelvin and once you find this slope you have to go back to our equation what is our equation my dear you can just see we already wrote the equation n which is equal to p over r multiplied by delta v over delta t now you can see what is our slope our slope is delta v over delta t so how you can write this equation n which is equal to p over r multiplied by slope take the slope value substitute here you will get the answer the unit for this mole is 
Clear? That's it, the procedure. P value, R value is a constant, which is nothing but P value 1.01 multiplied by 10 to the power of 5. R value is 8.314. And the slope value you have to get from the graph and substitute the value here. Get the value for the number of moles of gas present inside the container. Understand? Understand my idea? So this is the procedure for experiment number 3. Experiment 3, Charles Law. Understand? Thank you so much.